I am going to be recording today. Yeah, I'll do this. This is, can you close our door for me? Uh, this is also experimental probability and it reviews theoretical probability. <coughs> you both did on in 12.1. Each section of the spinner has the same area. Why does it matter that they have the same area? Miles, why does it matter that each section of the spinner has the same area? That means they're all equal. That means they're all equal. Equal odds of getting any of them. So then it says the table shows uh, for which, sorry, the table shows the results. For which color is the experimental probability of stopping on the color the same as a theoretical? So what is the main difference between experimental and theoretical probability? One has already happened. One has already happened. One's been tested. Which one has been tested? Experimental. Experimental is represented by the chart. So we need to figure out what the theoretical probability is first. So I'm going to write TP for theoretical probability. So how many spaces are there total on the spinner? Four. four. The odds of getting any one out of four is 25%. So we need to figure out what, which one of these, do not yell out loud or say it out loud, which one of these matches 25%. So whenever you do experimental probability, this is based off of the chart. This is based off of how many total tests that there were. So how many total times did they spin it? 20. 20. And then you test each and every individual one of them. So we're going to test five. What's five out of 20? Four. One fourth. Which is? 25%. So do we need to go any further? No. So the red would be the answer, red. Red has the same probability or the same probability as a theoretical probability. It happened 25% of the time. So theoretical probability says each of these should be hit evenly 25% of the time. Experimental probability says only one of them has been hit 25% of the time, and the rest of them, like green. Green is an ugly color. It is not. It's my favorite color. Green? It is not an ugly color. Like, these greens are ugly. Yeah, that's terrible. But, like, the be still, I like that green. My wedding color was green, like a green. like a mint green. Yeah. Probably like the tape, actually. That was my wedding color. It's not that green, though. I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible. It's not worse than yellow. Yellow is yellow's all, yeah, yellow is bad. So we're going to begin. Permutation, you'll want to write this down. A permutation is an arrangement of objects in which the order is important. So a word that you want to know with permutation, you want to put them together is arrangement. This is student journal page 377. We'll be in the student journal predominantly today. So if you have it, you might as well. So a permutation is an arrangement of objects in which the order is important. So whenever you see the word arrange, you want to think of permutation. You'll want to write them down because the problems that you'll get will not say, hey, this is a permutation. Hey, this is a combination. Tomorrow you're going to have to be able to see the difference between the two. And it's always in the wording. Arrangement will always deal with a permutation. Okay? For instance, there are six possible permutations of the letters A, B, C. So what do you, let's see, what do you think that means? Maybe uh, there's three different orders they can put in. Not three different orders, there's six different orders. So here they all are. You could do, ah! You can do A, B, C. Where A is first, B is second, C is third. You can keep A first and flip the two. Then you can do B first and then AC. B first and then you flip those. Do you see that? So it's all a different way to arrange them. So this is an easy example. You don't need a formula for it. You can pretty much do it all on your own. Um, but in a few minutes, uh, it's going to be a bigger problem, obviously. It's going to say, like, 21 people are on a boat doing something. I don't know. Uh, but you don't want to figure out all the combinations of those people. Okay? So there's going to be a formula for we're going to learn. But first, before you do, you're going to learn a new concept in math. It's called a factorial. Okay? So you probably saw this on uh, an SAT test. Whenever you see an exclamation point in math, it does not mean, like, four. No. It means you're going to write in order, descending, multiplying. So 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So like 10 factorial would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 
It does. But again, the shortcuts won't always work. Can you pull it in your hood for me? Uh, so here's what <coughs> it technically looks like. Here's what I want you to write down, a special case. The value of 0 factorial is 1. Write it down. It's one of those things in math I can't necessarily explain it to you. It's just a rule. Just like, because most of you are dying to use your calculator. How can I make this easier? Um, if you typed in any number, like 1 billion, what did I choose? I don't care. 1 billion, 811,222. Raise to the zero. You said it's 1 billion. It's not. One. It's 1. Sorry. I said 1 million. It's 1. Sorry. I don't think so, but. If you typed in anything, literally, I'm going to use her calculator. I'm just going to just hit a bunch of, but bunch of buttons. Okay? Raise it to zero. What does it equal? One. So it's one of those rules where I can't explain to you why. Maybe some mathematician could, or maybe it's just something we all agree on. So whenever you see zero factorial, that is one. It's going to matter in a few minutes. Okay? Whenever you use a formula, sometimes you'll get zero factorial, and that becomes the number one. That's the formula right there? No, it's not a formula. That's just showing you the pattern. This means whatever n is, that's the first number. And then one less than that number. And then two less than that number. Three less than that number. Uh, so I'm going to show you. Here are the two technical formulas written right here. You really only need to know this one. Because this one falls under that one down there. So... But it's kind of a shortcut. If you have, so here's what these mean. All right? You have them written somewhere, I'm sure. This number will always be, the one on the left, will always be the larger number. If it's not, then you have already set up your permutation wrong. So that means how many, so like all of you are in a race. There would be 20 of you, give or take. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. There'd be 19 of you. So 19 of you would be racing, and there's always a first, second, and third place. This second portion, it says R taken at a time, but what that would mean is how many places there are, and I'm not, I'm not talking locations, but I'm talking um, like ranks. Does that make sense? Like first, second, third, fourth, um, or even... If I chose any of you to be the president, vice president, and treasurer of this class, and I picked you at random, if I picked you to be the president, that's very different than being the vice president. Does that make sense? So the order would matter. So if I, going back to the original, if there were 19 of you and you were racing, and there were only three of you that could win, your permutation would look like this, 19 P3, because there are three places, 19 people total. So this left number will always be larger, the right number will always be smaller, okay? And this is the formula that you would use, n factorial over n minus r factorial, okay? The reason r has to be smaller is because you're going to subtract it. You cannot have a negative factorial, <coughs> only a positive, okay? So there's what you call a counting principle, which I can explain. Um, I'll actually use this for the counting. Well, no. I'll do it in a minute. Are there any questions on the formula? We're going to do a real life example first. Can I have Can I have four of you? Go. Up. I don't care who. Get up and go. You don't want to now? No. That was sick. Get up and do it. Why? You want to go, go? I'll go with you. Go ahead. I literally don't care. You're wasting our time. Come on. Around. The quicker we do this, the quicker we're done. One more. Now he'll do it. Okay. So, Miles is in first place, Karen is in second place, Tiffany is in third place, and Devin is an honorable oh. mention. Okay, so that's what we got so far. He's just one of those guys. So we got, do you all have different letters? Miles, Karen, Tiffany, Devin, you do. Okay, so now one of you switch places, two of you switch places. I don't care which one. You get in last place. So now you have Miles, Devin, Tiffany, Kieran. Now all of you switch places. 
Okay, so you got Devin, Miles, Kieran, Tiffany. So there are so many combinations that you can make or arrangements that you can make. If I had all of you move away from your first, second, third, fourth places, so move. There are four people, right? One, two, three, four. So there are all of you group over there or something. I'm trying to explain. This is called the counting principle. So this is a way, this is a shortcut, but it will only work for a permutation. It's called the counting principle. One of you take first place. I don't care. How many options were there for first place? Four of them. Now, how many options are there for second? Three of you. So one of you take second place. So how many options are there for third place? Two. Two of them. So one of you. Clearly he cares. Oh, there you go. Ladies first. <laughs> how many options are there for fourth place? One. This is called the counting principle. So what you would do is you would multiply all these together. What's four times three? Twelve. What times two? Twenty-four. Times one? Twenty-four. So there are 24 ways that we can arrange them. Does that make sense? So the counting principle says... There were four possible people to take first place, Denver. But once Miles was first place, there were only three people left to take second. Then only two people left, and then it was one person left. Does that make sense? So you can use the counting principle, but it will only work on certain occasions. You can sit down. Thank you very much. I'll explain. I'll use <laughs> Consider, so you have your first eight problems of your homework, or, or five, I don't remember but it looks just like this. I don't know if you guys notice on your homework sections, it'll say, look at example three. Yeah, example one or two or three. This is example one. There are problems exactly like it. So let's read. Consider the number of permutations of the letters in the word July. In how many ways can you arrange A, all of the letters, and B, two of the letters? So how many answers are we going to have? Two. two of them. So we're going to do A first. So guess what? When you go to do your homework, how many answers should you have? Two, because it's going to have the same setup. All right? So how many? So this one says use all of the letters. So how many letters are there total? Four. Four. And how many letters are we using? Four. Four. So whenever you have those two numbers matching, look at the formula. 4P4, four four, that's the same thing as four permutation. That means there are four places, just like we had first, second, third, fourth. And there are four letters to use. So that means we will do four factorial. Because that means one, two, three, four. There are four letters in the word July. In my first spot, okay, I haven't used any yet, so there are four options. Once I use a letter, I cannot use it again, so then there would be three. Then there would be two. Then there would be one. Y'all see that? So how many ways are there to arrange the four letters? 24 ways. What was what? What's the second answer? I haven't gotten it yet. I mean, started. You're talking about B? The second answer would be B. So like, you see how it says A, all of the letters, B, two of the letters? So that's how you're going to have two answers. So in this one, you're going to have a permutation. How many letters are there total? How many of them are we using? Two of them. Okay, that means we could use J and U. We could use J and L. We could use J and Y. We could use UJ, UL, UY. You see what I'm saying? So you're going to use the formula. I'll show you the counting principle, but it won't help you tomorrow. I'll show you how to use the formula first. If you look in the bottom left corner, I have it written down. All right, the first letter, the letter on the left, will always be N. So the top, you put N factorial. The bottom, you put N minus R factorial. So what is N in our problem right now? Four. And in the bottom left, four minus, what is R? Two factorial. So from here, you got to make sure you use PEMDAS. I'm going to show you how to um, use this on paper and save yourself some time. Um, PEMDAS says parentheses first. So what's 4 minus 2? Two? 2. So this is technically 2 factorial on the bottom. Common mistake. A lot of people would be like, well, 4 over 2 is 2. That is not the case. Because 4 factorial, what does it represent? 4, four what? Times 3 times 2 
times 1, right? Mm -hmm. What does 2 factorial represent? Two. 2 times 1. So because they're being divided, you can cancel. That's the only way that you can reduce. You cannot reduce before because you would have gotten 2 as the answer. But what are we really going to get as the answer? 4 times 3, which is 12. 12 possible ways. If you had used the counting principle, um, how many letters? Well, we're using any combination of two letters. So there are two places. How many options are there for the first letter? There are four. Once you use one of them, how many options are there for the second? Three. What's four times three? Twelve. So there is a counting principle, but it's literally using the same thing. It's fail-proof if you use the formula. Okay? Question. Okay. Look at that. Ten, ten horses are running in a race. In how many ways can the horse finish first, second, and third place? Assuming that there are no ties. So we have a permutation. Why is it a permutation? Because it matters the order. Thank you, Hunter. Matters the order. First, second, third place. Okay? So. You're going to put the total number of people competing. How many total are competing? Two. Ten horses. And how many places are there? Three. So we're going to put ten factorial in the top. And then ten minus three factorial in the bottom. So I'm going to teach you a shortcut. Instead of writing out ten, nine... Eight seven six five four three two one. Ten minus three is seven factorial. So there is a way to not write out everything. You can take ten factorial and you can write ten times nine times eight times seven factorial. What does seven factorial represent? 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The bottom has 7 factorial, which also represents 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So if you stop at 7 factorial, what do you think we can do? Cancel them. So then you have 10 times 9, which is 90, times 8 is 720. Questions? Okay. We're going to do this one, page 379 in your student journal. Apparently, we're a part of a rock band right now. Read the dress. What's the third word? Your rock band. Yours possessive. We talked about that. Your rock band has nine songs recorded, but you only want to put five of them on your demo CD um, to hand out to local radio stations. How many possible ways could the five songs be ordered on your demo CD? So, permutation. Why is it a permutation? The order matters, but also here's a way to know. Because technically nobody cares if your favorite song is first or your favorite song is second. But once you use a song, can you use it again? No. So that's a good way to figure oh, it out. <laughs> that would still be a different song. Oh. It wouldn't be the same exact. Nobody wants to hear Jingle Bells five times in a row. Sorry. Once you use a song, you cannot use it again. So how many total are there? Nine. How many are we using? Five. five. So we're going to have nine factorial. And then what goes on the bottom? Nine minus five factorial. So we got 9 factorial over 9 minus 5 is 4 factorial. So you can do 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 4 factorial. Does everyone understand why I stop at 4 factorial? Yes. So what can I do next? Yeah, I can cancel the 4 factorial, and then I multiply 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, which is 15,000 something. Right? 15,120. It's going to show up. 
Well, I wrote it down. Yes, sir. Uh, because the bottom is 4 factorial, so I kind of save myself time. 4 factorial is the same thing as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So because it's down here, I can also stop right here. So cancel them both out. It says reconnecting, but the answer is 15,120. Cool. All right. This is a completely new problem. This one should be the hardest one that you'll see. Okay? Here's why. For a town parade, you will ride on a float with your soccer team. We're all a part of the soccer team. There are 12 floats in the parade. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, finding room, 12. Um, and their order is chosen at random. Okay? Find the probability. So this tells me my answer should be a percent or a fraction. Okay? Probability is always the part over the whole or known as the favorable outcome. What does favorable outcome mean? What's most like common? No. What's a favorable outcome? The outcome that you want to The outcome that we want to happen. What outcome do we want to happen? Let's read. Find the probability that your float is first and the float with the school chorus is second. So first thing that you need to do is figure out how many total outcomes there are without having your float first or second. How many spaces are there? Twelve. Twelve. All right, and how many floats are there? Twelve. We're talking about the total amount. For the first space, there are twelve options. It could be yours, it could be someone else's. But once that float is used, how many options are there for the next one? 11, and then there's 10, and then there's 9. So once you use a float, they keep going down in number by 1. All right, so 12, permutation 12 is the same thing as 12 factorial. And we're going to stop there for a minute. Okay, I'm not going to figure out what 12 factorial is right now. We're going to leave it. Because we're going to figure out how many favorable there are. And the only way I can do that is by drawing it for you. Our favorable outcome has us first, correct? So the soccer team first, and who's second? Chorus. Chorus. So you're going to need to use a little bit of common sense. How many float options are there for third? Ten. Ten. Once you take one of those, how many options is there for the next? Nine. Nine. Do you see the pattern? So total, once you and the chorus are in the correct spots that you want them, the favorable spots... We don't care who's 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, 6th. What? We don't care. Okay? So how many, more, uh, how many more spaces are there after you in the chorus? 10. 10. And how many floats are there left? 10. 10. So that would end up being 10 factorial. So I see 10 factorial over 12 factorial. You cannot reduce. You're going to have to write them out. Um, but what do you notice about this fraction? You see that 10's on the top and 12 is on the bottom. So are we going to get a percent? Yes. No. We will, because 10 is smaller than 12. So this is a smaller number than the whole outcome. So instead of what we've been doing, I don't need to write out 10 factorial. What I need to do is write out 12 factorial, and what number will I stop at? 10. 10. I'm going to do 12 times 11 times 10 factorial. If you don't, that's totally fine. You will just be writing 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Twice. So what happens next? They cancel, but what happens to the numerator? It becomes 1. It does not go away. Because this is probability, you need a fraction as the answer. Because if it's not, you're about to say there's a 132% chance that this is going to happen. If you have over a 100% chance then you're 1,000% wrong. So what is 1 over 132 equal? It's a very small. It's 7.5 or 6. 7.56? Yeah. 7.6. Yeah. Percent. So if it's chosen at random, it is very likely that you are first and the, so and the course team is second. Okay. 
you're going to try one by yourself. So a lot of you are doing well. For the bottom, so let's see, you got one, two, three, four, five, six letters. All right, so six letters and how many places? Six, so the bottom is six factorial. The top, it says with specifications, we want what letter to be first? T and what letter to be last? So how many spaces are there now? Four spaces. It's not the two that you filled in, it's the how many are left. So there are four options for the second letter, three, two, and one. So it's going to be four, four with a four factorial. Because four blanks, four letters. You write it out, you got six times five times four factorial. You got one over 30. And what is that equal approximately? 30.3? 3.3%. So common mistake a lot of you made, it's not the two that you filled in, it's what's left, what is remaining, that's what's going to go on the top. Okay? So here's what you're going to do now. You're going to finish those four problems from Friday if you have not finished them. If you have, then the red is your homework tonight. Here are the dates for your exam review. I'm not always going to remind you. It's on the blackboard, and it's on your paper. So go ahead and begin. Finish the four problems from Friday and turn them in, and then you can begin on your homework. Remember that the first section on your homework has a part A and a part B.